Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Pearl of Wisdom. And you're watching my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, that's on the Pearl of Wisdom show. By the way, here I got it. My my daughter got me this shirt. Pearl of Dance. This is actually the back of the shirt. I'm wearing it backwards. But the reason why is because we like to do this. And this is called the Perlo Dance. This will bring all the good things in the world into your life if you do this every day. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about more of that at the end of the video. <laughs> if you want to know more about the Perlo Dance and the power of it. But we are going to get into some interesting stuff. It's called uh, Brady Kachuk Traded to Places video. Uh, yeah, Brady Kachuk. Uh, you're saying, oh, he won't get traded by the Ottawa Senators. Maybe you're right. Uh, but there's been a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, Shane O'Reilly from Sirius Radio. I don't know if you know anything about Sirius Radio, but if you do, you should check it out. Really great show. Uh, a lot of great shows on Sirius Radio. He talked about a couple months ago about Matthew Kachuk. Kind of letting it leak out that he would prefer to go to St. Louis. And then there's obviously the idea that Brady Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk, who were born in St. Louis and father played for St. Louis, may want to play there together. Now there's that. Then there's the aspect of basically the Ottawa Senators not being able to sign players a lot as they don't want to spend the money. Uh, Meltzer, the owner of the Ottawa Senators, has got his uh, number and that's it. And he's not going to pay any more. And uh, with all the other factors involved with Brady Kachuk and the possibility that he could pay play with his brother and all of those sort of things like that. In the background, I think it's possible. But we got talking about it on my live show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Sub yourself up right now. And you, I will send a notification out in the mornings telling you when I'll be live and you can come on and discuss this type of fine frolic. Uh, this is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the four major sports and play, teams within those four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Pays my bills, don't you know? And it's great. Love it. Um, anyway, so we just started discussing some trades that may happen with Brady Kachuk on the live stream. I got a few from the people that were on the stream, and then I got my own that I think could happen. I kind of went with, if I was Ottawa, what uh, what would I want in return? So first I think, though, we probably want to discuss how good is Brady Kachuk because I don't think the numbers, as far as offensive numbers, tell the whole story. Personally, me watching uh, Brady Kachuk, I uh, I see a guy that's been a little bit brought down a tad. I guess that's the word I want to use. Offensively, by being on a really green, young team, he's been kind of doing things all on his own. His brother actually has put up better numbers in his career so far than him. Now, if you ask Matthew, he will tell you that Brady Kachuk is actually a more skilled, and very seriously here, is the more skilled player out of the both of them. But when I watch him, that's what I see too. However, it hasn't exactly translated on the score sheet, which we'll look at right here. Uh, Brady's numbers, uh, he started 2018-19. He is now 22 years old. Six foot four, 212. Plays like it. Um, he's got, the guy plays with a heart and determination that you just don't find in players very often. Simple as that. Uh, he's, uh, he's hardcore. And I love him. And he's a, I think he's the type of player that you win cups with. You need, you, do you need guys like Chuck? I suppose maybe because they're so hard to find. There's teams that haven't had guys like Chuck. Like I wouldn't say Tampa Bay had a good Chuck guy on their lineup, in their lineup, really. 
But if you have one, it increases your chances of winning the cup a lot. Not just because of his offensive numbers, but because of his just sheer determination, uh, drive, competitiveness, heart, physicality, fierce. That's the word I'm looking for. Brady Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk bring a fierceness that you don't see in too many players, and it's genuine. Like It's not like these guys are getting up for it. This is what they are, and it's very hard to find a power forward like this. Now, you look at his numbers, and you go, well, you know, 22 goals in 23 games uh, in 2018. What was he, 19 years old? Uh, 20. He didn't go up much, 44, and last year he would have been in the 50-point range. But you got to remember, this was an Ottawa team that was pretty weak. Um, his brother played with guys like Goudreau and Monaghan when he was playing really well before the injuries started coming in. Lindholm, much more established stars to be passing the puck to and from and just creating offense together. Kachuk almost has done it on his own here. And I think most general managers in the league is, are, will surely realize that. Um, and if he does become available for whatever reason, there'll be a long lineup. Now, let's remember, though, as I mentioned, there's always this, there's this thing right now hanging over almost all restricted free agents as where do they really want to go? Or do they want to sign a long-term deal? Now, in Ottawa, uh, I understand. I, I, I would really basically be saying we're going long or not. Now, that being said, I think the number is $8.5 million. I'm doing it right now. And I, and I know I've talked to Ottawa Senators fans out there uh, that are saying he's not worth it because they're bringing up his point production right now. It's not He hasn't earned that number when you're giving young guys contracts, you're not basing it on what they've done at the, up to that point. I'm sorry. Not on an eight-year, there's no way. You're never going to get a, a young player to sign a contract based that with an eight-year contract at, what, 36 points in 56 games that he has. Yeah, you're probably only going to give him like four and a half, maybe five million, something like that, based on some player's where they are right now uh, at that point, like Eberle, for instance, at five and a half, something of that nature, right? And he signed that a while ago, so that might not even be a little off. But you're doing this based on what he's going to be, especially when you build the team around him. In other words, you're trusting in your belief in the talent of that player. And if you're not willing to do that, forget about it. You're not signing Brady Kachuk, or you're going to give him a, uh, you're, you're going to give him a bridge, and he's going to walk. And that's what it feels like Ottawa's doing. And if they are, they're ridiculous because these kind of guys are extremely hard to find. So we came up with some – anyways, we came up with some uh, ideas of some trades. First of all, I'm going to go through some of the ones that were brought up in the uh, – live stream that I did. Uh, first one we have is St. Louis Blues trade O'Reilly for Brady. Now, that's a very interesting move. Um, Ryan, uh, Ottawa certainly could use a number one center. I don't think Norris is a number one center. So are Ottawa fans. I don't think he is down the road in, or now. I think he's good, but I think ultimately he'd be a number two. And O'Reilly would be your number one captain of material that won a cup that could really be a veteran presence as Ottawa builds their team. I get it, but I just don't believe that they're going to want to grab a guy at 30 years old and a guy that's um, going to have to need a new contract after this year. Now, it's possible he might be happy to go to Ottawa. He's from Clinton, Ontario. So... Um, that brings him closer to his home and all of that. I'm not saying it's out of the question that they would do something like this. Um, based, I think it's based a lot on what Ottawa feels of their prospects and what they're going to be 
in the next two to three years. Because if you're going to grab Ryan O'Reilly, you're going to be thinking you're a cup contender in the next two to three years. Personally, I think Ottawa still has a ways to go before they can be saying something like that. I'll, I love Stutzla and um, Branch, uh, Branstrom in, uh, on defense. Sanderson is there, but two to three years from now, cup contender? Maybe. I, I Maybe. I, I really have to go a maybe on that. Um, I like Drake Batherson, um, but you still got Paul, Nicholas Paul and Connor Brown are okay. Shane Pinto, what's he going to be? Are they going to be ready two, three years from now? It's close. It's possible, though. And uh, certainly O'Reilly uh, is going to be fine up until he's 33 years old. And he certainly would be a great leader for this team. So I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't think it's a bad deal. Um, but I, I just have a feeling they're going to be going for younger players than that. So I did my own for St. Louis. Now, if they went for, to St. If he went to St. Louis, this is a team that he's likely going to resign with. Also, he may be going to St. Louis based on the fact that they know and everybody in the league it's been made aware of uh, behind the scenes. You know, you're not going to hear it publicly most of the time that he really wants to play in St. Louis. So, if that's the case, then Ottawa's leverage drops because a lot of teams are not going to give too much for Brady Kachuk if he's not willing to sign a long-term contract with them either, right? So if you went to St. Louis, I think you could get Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas. I love Oscar Sundquist if you could work a way to get him in there. Uh, I would. How about Robert Thomas, Oscar Sundquist? Yeah, Robert Thomas, Oscar Sundquist, um, a first-round pick, and a prospect. Somebody like Jake Neighbors or something like that. Oh, Jake, uh, Jake Neighbors would be awesome. If you can get that out of St. Louis, I think you're doing pretty well. But are you getting ultimate value for Chuck? I don't think so. But I, I think if they were stuck in a situation where everybody kind of knew, he, like, or if he just basically told you, I'm signing with St. Louis when I'm 26. Plain and simple. He just told everybody. Now, I'm signing in St. Louis when I'm 26. So uh, then the value is probably going to be something like that, I would say. And even then, if you could get O'Reilly, maybe you just go for it. Because you have a number one center for the next four years, which is very hard to find. Uh, but that was an interesting trade. Um, next, we have the LA Kings. And that was Lauren Darkin from my live stream, by the way. Lauren, love you, Lauren. Hajin <laughs> uh, Alexanian, also from the live stream, put in a, he's a LA Kings fan. And he said he would offer Turcotte, Kempe, Spencer, and a first. So, and I, I basically responded, um, I'm not a huge Turcotte guy. I think he's kind of a third-line center more than anything. Um, I, I, I mean, he's good. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not as high on him as a lot of people are. Uh, good, uh, he could be a very good third-line center. Very, very good. So I'm, it's not like I don't like him, but if you're trading a guy like Brady Kachuk, you're, I, I, think, I think you're looking more in the first line or second line center at least, especially for a team like Ottawa that could use some help up the middle. Kempe, also not an enormous fan of Kempe. Yeah, he's got lots of speed, but at 25, it kind of is what he is right now, which is sort of in the 40 to 50 point range. He's your run-of-the-mill second line winger. And uh, then Spencer, small, small uh, prospect that has been working his way up in the raw, uh, working working his way up. Jordan Spence, not Spencer, sorry. Jordan Spence has been working his way up for a while. He's twenty years old. Had a good year in the AHL last year, but probably at maybe a four or five, maybe a five six. 
Like, it's not very likely he's going to be a one-two defenseman. And then the first round pick is pro- if you get if they get Kachuk because they would be going putting Kachuk with Kopitar and Brown. Imagine that Kachuk, Kopitar, and Brown. I would not want to play against that line. Holy crap! Uh, then you bring Arvidsson for Dano and Kempe. They're, they're going to make the playoffs almost assuredly with that. I think they're going to make the playoffs anyways. If they got Kachuk in that deal. Uh, they're for sure going to make that playoffs, which makes that first rounder a fairly late first. Now, it's a fairly deep draft, but if I'm Ottawa, I'm only doing this again if they if he basically has said he's not going to sign with L.A., maybe I do this. If they're willing to take him for four years, this is a deal that he might have to live with because I don't know if anybody's going to get any better but if if he's going to sign for eight years if he's going to sign full with them uh that's not good enough i'm going to want kupar I, okay i did my own deal here this is what i would want uh kupari velardi and a first kupari velardi and a first i like velardi a lot Unlike Turcotte, I think he's got more offensive upside, and he's much bigger. Even if he does turn out to be a third-line center, I prefer to have his size there than uh, Turcotte's. Um, he's only 22 years old. He's worked on his skating a great deal. It's looked a lot better, and uh, I think he's got a lot of good offensive upside, especially in Ottawa where they're kind of shallow. He would get a really good chance to get a lot of minutes. Uh, Kupari... Maybe even Kaliev, actually. I know that uh, Kaliev is basically off the, off the, uh, untouchable to most LA fans. Uh, and, he, and it may be untouchable to management, too, because he looks like he's going to be really good, but I think he's a little overvalued. Um, they don't even have him on the roster yet. Yes, they have him as in the minors. He's 20 years old. He's Again, they've been working really slow with him. It's not like he couldn't have played already. Uh, he got 31 points in 40 games as a 20-year-old in the AHL. I'm sorry, but that is okay. But if you think this guy's a 40-goal scorer, he's not. I'd be looking at Cali or Kapari, Velarde, and a first possibly more if he's going to sign eight years. So what do you guys think, LA fans, of that? Uh, next, we have Montreal Canadiens. Um, let me bring it up here. The Montreal Canadiens, and this is from Mercer, who is not a Montreal Canadiens fan. He was just giving uh, an option for a guy like Brady Kachuk. Now, I don't see a fit here, but he suggested Gallagher, Anderson, and a first. Well, you know, that would make Ottawa very competitive, a much more competitive team. I'm not a big Anderson guy, but I think the perception is that he's that 25, 30 goal power forward you're looking for. I just think he's a basket case in his own zone. And he goes all over the place, and he had a high shooting percentage. Not my pick for me, but I get it. And Gallagher, trading Gallagher away at Montreal, whoo, almost seems sacrilege uh, that it could possibly happen. I think it's something that Ottawa would have to consider for the leadership and everything. And the first would probably be a not bad pick. Um. I just trading them to Montreal and you got to, you know, strengthening that roster. I just don't think that's going to happen. I didn't even do a trade for this for what it would be for Montreal. Uh, I think I would want, you know, uh, I, I just don't think it's going to work. It was an interesting shot at it, but I, di- I didn't think it was going to work. But Montreal fans, what do you think about that deal? I, I do love Brady Kachuk. Love, love, love. Uh, I just, as as in Ottawa, if I'm Ottawa, I'm probably looking for more from Montreal than I would anywhere else since it's in, 
It's interdivision. And uh, I'm not sure that even though we love Gallagher, I'm not sure you want a guy 29 years old here again. They're still in a rebuilding kind of thing. And besides that, I don't think there's enough here to really turn the crank for uh, for Ottawa to, to bite on, to tell you the honest truth. Did I get everybody there? Yeah. Okay. Now I got my own picks. And uh, first of all, the most interesting one is Calgary Flames. Of course, for the brothers to play together, we got to do something for the Calgary Flames, right? Uh, that's the most interesting one that I would see. And to make that work, and this would be basically he's signing long term for sure. Uh, and then, of course, Matthew would sign long term. So you, they're going to have a lot wrapped up in Matthew, and uh, Matthew's going to be seven million after this year. His qualifying offer is going to be almost eight. So I think you basically would just give them both eight point five million for a long term contract, and you'd have the Kachuk on the right side and Brady on the left. With Elias Lind Lindholm, who I'm sure they would be asking for, and that may be the problem. I think Ottawa really wants a center here, and I don't think Monaghan's going to want to going to be the one they're looking at, uh, which makes it difficult. I think it would be Connor Zari, Connor Zari, and I want Anderson. Connor Zari, Anderson, and Dubé. And the Dubé is basically to make it work financially so that Calgary can sign them. There's going to be a million dollar difference, and Calgary is pretty much right to the limit. But Pillick will go on the uh, IR, and uh, they can work some ways of putting guys down. You know, it's only a million. Teams can usually figure out a way to uh, get under the cap, for, for especially if they can get somebody like Chuck. But I'm looking at Dubé, Zari, and Anderson, if he's going to sign for the full term. I know that seems – I love Anderson too, and it would hurt Calgary. But to have Matthew and Brady on the same line for the next eight years, man, and building around that, those are guys you win cups with so much. Uh, that's the kind of fierceness that a team needs over the top, actually. This would bring, I think, Calgary on almost the over-the-top level of fierceness you need to win a cup. Those kind of guys in playoffs are going to crush it. And then you got Coleman, too. You just got to go find out some, find some centers. And Elias Lindholm's got heart for days. I think you're building a, a team that can win in the playoffs doing a trade like this. Tell me what you think, Calgary fans. Uh, and we will go to the last one. That being the Buffalo Sabres. And pretty simple. Interesting. I'm hearing that uh, Buffalo now is giving a lot more medical information to people so they can see how good Jack Eichel is going to be. And uh, if it comes, if I'm Ottawa and I just can't get her done with Brady Kachuk, I would get it done because 8.5 for 8, I'd have it done already. But I would, uh, if there was anybody I would trade him for, it would be a healthy Jack Eichel, no problems. And since you're taking a risk right now because he's got to come back from injury and all those sort of things like that, you, Ottawa might not even have to add here. Buffalo needs to change the whole culture and everything in their room. Brady Kachuk, I think, can do that. Uh, now, the question, of course, again is, is he going to resign? Is he going to do the – is he going to take the 8.5 – from Buffalo for the next eight years. And if that's the case, I think that deal could be done. I, I think, for first of all, for Ottawa, it's it, right now Eichel's probably going to go to a team that doesn't need him right away. Ottawa doesn't need him right away. 
They're not, even if they make the playoffs, they're not a contender. Uh, so if I if Eichel and as long as Eichel's willing to go there, and I haven't heard anything otherwise, he's basically willing to go just about anywhere. Uh, it's a short jaunt. Now the other thing is it's interdivision, but as it stands, if you take this risk, Eichel at ten million, you're like, well, if they're not going to sign Kachuk at eight point five, then why would they take Eichel at ten? Well, Eichel healthy. I love Brady Kachuk. Love, 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 love. But a healthy Eichel is better than Brady Kachuk by a significant margin, and actually is a bargain at ten million dollars. He's 80 to 90 point at least. I think he still has 100 point potential in him. Playing him with a guy like Stutzla and all the other young players that are coming up, I think he could crush it. Um, and not to mention, but that being said, I do agree with you. They, I don't know. They don't. Why don't they just give him the 8.5? People say he's not worth it. Uh, I think he is. I do. I think there's a lot more offense in that guy, and those are guys you win cups with, simple as that. But so is Jack Eichel. So it wouldn't be that bad of a trade-off. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Uh, come on to the live stream. I want to see you there. There we go. I want to see you there. It'd be fun, man. It's so much fun. You'll enjoy it. We do stuff like this. We'll be talking trades today. Uh, we're also grading all the coaches right now. So we're giving them a grade from 1 to 100. Then we're averaging all of it out. And we are going to... Uh, then we give each one a grade. And then we put them 1 to 32. So I'll be doing a video about that soon. Uh, lots of stuff coming. And the regular season's coming up in one week. Woo! Going to be good times. That's my full 42. Okay. Bye.